In this lesson, you will learn to solve systems of equations using determinants. And we have what's called Kramer's Rule. Now at the beginning of this lesson, I'd like to walk you through the derivation of this rule. So where this rule comes from. And we'll take the first few minutes to do that, and then at the end of the lesson, we'll walk you through how to use Kramer's Rule to solve systems of equations. So if you have a system of equations, say we had ax plus by equals e, cx plus dy equals f. And these are just two general equations. Well, to solve a system of equations, we need to get one of the variables to cancel when I add or subtract the two equations. And to do that, many times we need to multiply the, uh, the equations by some number so that they will cancel when I add or subtract. So here, we don't know what a, b, and c, and d are. So we have to assume that we do need to multiply in order for the equations to cancel when I add them together. So if you were to look at the x's, if we try to get the x's to cancel, I need to multiply the top and the bottom equation by a different number so that the x's cancel. Well, if I multiply the top equation by a negative c, so looking at this number, multiply the top equation by a negative c, and then multiply the bottom equation by a positive a, so looking at this variable, or this coefficient right here. So now what I have is I have this, these two new equations where I multiplied both sides of the equation by a negative c, and the second equation I multiplied both sides by an a. So then I can distribute the negative c to both terms within the parentheses, and I can distribute the a through both terms in the parentheses. And so I have negative c times a, or negative a times c times x, then negative c times b times y would give you negative bcy. And then on the right side of the equation we have negative c times e. Second equation we have a times cx, and then we have a times dy, and that's equal to a times f. So now when I add these together, notice these first two terms will cancel. And that was my goal. So now I have negative bcy plus ady, or I can think of that as ady minus bcy. And then I have negative ce plus af, or same thing as af minus ce. Well, our objective was to solve for one of the variables. So we got the x's to cancel, now we can solve for y. Notice these first two terms both have y. What I can do is I can factor out the y, and I'm left with, in parentheses, ad minus bc. So from here, I can then solve for y by dividing both sides by ad minus bc to get this to cancel, and divide the other side by ad minus bc. So now I have af minus ce, over AD minus BC, and all of that is equal to Y. So now we solve for Y just with these two general equations. And now we're going to solve for X using the same type of logic. So to solve for X, I need to get the Y's to cancel. So to get the Y's to cancel, I need to multiply both equations by something so that when I add the two equations, the Y's will cancel. So what I can do is I can multiply the top and bottom equation by a number where I'm going to use this b and multiply the bottom equation by that b. And then this d, I'm going to multiply the top equation by a negative d. So now I have one that's going to be negative and one that's going to be positive. So when I add them, the negative and positive will cancel. So multiply the first equation by a negative d, second equation by a positive b, and then I can distribute negative d and distribute the b to the parentheses. Now I have a negative adx and then I have a negative bdy equals negative de. Second equation, I have bcx and then bdy equals b times f. So now notice when I add these together, the bdy term would cancel. We have one negative and one positive. So that was my intent. So now I have negative ADX plus BCX 
or I can think of that as BCX minus ADX. And then I have negative DE plus BF, or you can think of that as BF minus DE. So then to solve for X, which is my goal, I can factor an X out of the first two terms. I'm left with a BC minus AD in parentheses. And then to solve for X, I can divide both sides by BC minus AD so that these will cancel. And I'm left with now X equals BF minus DE over BC minus AD. So we have solved for X, but what I like to do to finish this off is I like to change the signs of everything and it's gonna make it easier to remember uh, later. But to change the sign of everything, I like to multiply the top and the bottom by negative one. So when I multiply top and bottom both by negative one, I don't change anything because that's the same thing as multiplying by a positive one. So I now have negative BF and then a positive DE for the numerator. So positive DE and a negative BF. And then I have a positive AD and a negative BC. So I now am left with DE minus BF over AD minus BC. So in conclusion, we have X and Y equaling the following fractions. Now if you take a look at the denominator, AD minus BC, and you were to look also at the equations. So with the two equations, if you were to take the coefficients of the variables, so A and B, and then C and D. And you were to take the determinant of A, B, C, D. If you take the determinant of A, B, C, D, notice when you multiply across, you have A times D, and then multiply across this way, you have C times B, or B times C, same thing. So you have AD minus BC. And that is your denominator for the fraction. We have AD minus BC for both of these fractions. So your denominator is found by taking the determinant of the matrix by looking at the coefficients of the different variables. Now take a look at the numerator of the x. So x equals DE minus BF. Now if you were to replace the A in the x, or the A in the C, sorry. Replace the A and the C with an E and an F. So instead of the determinant of A, B, C, D, I'd have the determinant of instead E, B, F, D. So replacing the A and the C with an E and an F. Well then, if I find the determinant of this, I have E times D, which is E, D, minus B times F. And notice, that is your numerator. I guess you could write that as a D, E minus B, F. That is your numerator for x. So what I do is I can find the numerator by replacing the variables with the x with the e and the f instead. And same concept with the y. If I replace the coefficients with the y instead with an e and an f, I now have a, e, c, f, and find the determinant of this. Notice I'd have a times f minus and then c times e which is the numerator of y. So to summarize everything that I just said, x would equal the determinant of EBFD over the determinant of ABCD, and then y equals the determinant of AECF over the determinant of ABCD. Or to be more general, uh, we can replace this top matrix with a capital D lowercase x and the bottom matrix with a capital D. What that means is that we're finding the determinant for the different matrices. So the capital D is the determinant found just by looking alone at the coefficients of the variables. The D with the subscript of x means I'm replacing the variables, the coefficients with the x with instead the E and the F. And then same thing for y equals. The d with the lowercase y means I'm replacing the coefficients of y with the e and the f. And the denominator, once again, is the determinant by looking at the coefficients of the variables.
Now let's use Cramer's law to find the solution of a system of equations. So here we have two equations, and our objective is to solve this equation for x and y. Now Cramer's law says the following, and we need to begin by finding the determinant of the coefficients of the variables. So here we have a 4, negative 1, negative 3, and 6. So when I find the determinant of that, that is going to be the denominator. So finding the determinant of 4, negative 1, negative 3, 6, I multiply across to get 24, and then I get negative 1 times negative 3 gives me a positive 3. So 24 minus the 3 would give you 21. So the capital D is 21, and then we need to find D sub X and D sub Y. So to find D sub X, what I do is I replace the 4 and negative 3. I replace that with, instead, the 1 and the 3 over here. So I have a 1 and 3 in place of the coefficients with the x terms, and then the negative 1 and 6 stay the same. So the determinant of this I find by multiplying 1 times 6, and then 3 times negative 1, and then subtract 6 minus negative 3. 6 minus negative 3 is 9, so that would be d sub x. And then for d sub y, I replace the coefficients with the y terms with instead that 1 and the 3. So what we have is going to be 4, negative 3, and then we have 1 and 3 being replaced for those y coefficients. So then I can multiply to get 12, and then multiply to get negative 3, and I subtract 12 minus negative 3 to get 15. So for x, I plug in a 9 for d sub x and 21 in for d. So I have 9 over 21 for x. And then for y, I have the 15 over 21. And then I can reduce these to get 3 7 and 5 7 So we've just shown you how to use Cramer's rule given two equations in the system. However, Cramer's rule can be expanded to include any number of equations. So this is Cramer's rule, and it's a lot of math jargon. So let me explain to you what we have here. It says the solution of a system of n linear equations and n variables is given by the following. Meaning, it does not matter how many equations we have or how many variables we have, as long as the equations and variables are the same. So if we have four equations, we'd have to have four variables. Three equations needs three variables. And here it says, D is the determinant of the matrix, so we've already discussed that, that is your denominator. And then the dx, dy, etc., you derive those from D by replacing the coefficients of x, y, etc., respectively, by the constants. So here let's explain how this works with, a, uh, with three equations. So here are three equations using Cramer's rule we would have x equals dx over d, y equals dy over d, and z would equal dz over d. So let's begin by finding the denominator, so the capital D. And to do that, we're going to look at all the coefficients of the variables. So we have 4, negative 1, 2, negative 3, 6, negative 4, and 3, 1, and 1. So we can find the determinant of this matrix, and I'm not going to take the time to walk you through all the steps, but if you were to expand by using the first row, what we'd have would be the following, and your determinant would equal 7. Okay, if you don't know how to do determinants, maybe go back and look at a previous lesson. But for now, we'll just um, tell you that the determinant is 7. And then, to find dx, what we do is we replace the coefficients of the x terms, so the 4, negative 3, and 3. That first column we're replacing instead with a 1, 3, and a 4. So now we have 1, 3, and 4 in for the first column. You find the determinant of this matrix, and you would find that your determinant would be negative 13. Do the same thing again for the y. So in place of all the coefficients with the y terms, I replace that negative 1, 6, and 1 replace that now with a 1, 3, and 4. I can then find the determinant of this matrix, which would give me 25. And then looking at z, 
I can replace the coefficients of z, the 2, negative 4, and 1, with instead the 1, 3, and 4. And then I find the determinant of this matrix to get 42. So now my solutions for x, y, and z I find by putting everything together. So I take dx over d, so negative 13 over 7, and then dy over d, I get 25 over 7, and dz over d, I get 42 over 7. And the 42 over 7 I can reduce to get 6, and 25 over 7 I would get 3 and 4 sevenths, and the x would still be negative 13 over 7. So we have learned in this lesson how to solve a system of equations by using Kramer's rule. Now as we finish up, we can also determine the number of solutions by using Kramer's rule. So for example, if you had these two equations and you were to solve this, we could find the solution to be 3 and 3 fourths and then 1 fourth. Which if you were to graph the two equations, we would see that they intersect right here at this black dot. So it has one solution. Now by looking at the determinant, if the determinant is not equal to zero, so capital D, the determinant of the coefficients of the variables, the one, 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 and negative three, if this determinant is not equal to zero, then we have consistent equations, meaning we're gonna have a solution and there's only gonna be one solution. Now if you had two equations such as right here, we could solve this and we'd get 0 equals 8. Now we know already that if you get this, there would be no solution because we have parallel lines. Now by looking at the determinant, we can also come to the same conclusion. If the determinant is equal to 0 and d sub y is not equal to 0, then we have inconsistent equations where there is no solution. And then lastly, if you were to have these two equations, we know that when you solve, you get something like zero equals zero, which means that we have two lines that coincide. So two lines on top of each other. Now by looking at the determinants, we can conclude the same thing if the determinant is equal to zero and d sub y is equal to zero. So we can conclude that we have consistent and dependent equations where we have an infinite number of solutions. And that concludes our lesson for today. We will see you next time.